Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the controversy involving Steven Crowder and the Daily Wire? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Steven Crowder, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Steven Crowder was born in Detroit, Michigan on July 7, 1987. His family moved to a suburb of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, when he was three years old, and that's where he grew up. At age 18, he returned to the United States and briefly attended college in Vermont. Stephen became active in stand-up comedy, did voice acting, and had small roles in a few inconsequential movies. It's safe to say they weren't crowd-pleasers. In his early 20s, Stephen started posting videos supporting conservative ideology. He also took a job with Fox News. After making negative statements about Fox News, they ended their relationship with Stephen. He connected with a conservative streaming service and had his own program called Louder with Crowder. That service eventually merged with a media company called The Blaze, which was founded by Glenn Beck. In addition to this program, Stephen also uploaded content to his YouTube channel. One of Stephen's popular segments on his program was called Change My Mind. This is where Stephen would set up a table at a college campus with a sign inviting students to challenge him on various controversial topics. Here are a few examples. Trump is not racist, change my mind. CNN is fake news, change my mind. And socialism is evil, change my mind. Stephen has been accused of making racist statements and making false statements about the 2020 U.S. presidential election. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On January 17, 2023, Stephen released a video on his YouTube channel talking about an offer he received from a conservative media company. He didn't provide the name of the company, but later it would be revealed that it was the Daily Wire. This company was founded in 2015 by Ben Shapiro, a well-known conservative political commentator. During Stephen's video, he claimed that Big Tech was in bed with what he called Big Con. Stephen was upset with the offer because it contained a provision where he would lose money if his show lost advertisers. This is something that has happened in the past to Stephen because he's so controversial. Stephen believed that this was caving into the censorship demands of big tech and referred to the offer by the Daily Wire as a slave contract. He did not want to follow the crowd. The next day, January 18, the co-CEO of the Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring, responded to Stephen's video. Jeremy provided many details about the offer that was made to Stephen. It was really more of a non-binding term sheet. It was a starting place for a negotiation. Jeremy claimed that Stephen misrepresented the details of the offer. For example, the Daily Wire was willing to absorb most of the financial losses if Stephen's behavior caused advertisers to leave. The Daily Wire was not trying to engage in censorship like big tech. Rather, they were a victim of it as well. Jeremy mentioned that the offer to Stephen was $50 million over four years, which is something that Stephen did not mention in his initial video. I guess it just slipped his mind. To get this phenomenal sum of money, Stephen would only have to produce 192 90-minute episodes a year. This is a four-day work week when factoring in a four-week vacation. This works out to $65,000 for each show produced or $34,000 every single day for four years. What Jeremy was essentially saying was that if the Daily Wire doesn't make as much money due to losing advertisers, then Stephen will not make as much money. He was expected to absorb some of the losses. It's just the math of the business world. Stephen responded to Jeremy on January 19 with another video. He claimed that his issue with the contract was not about money. Rather, he was trying to protect other conservative commentators who may rise up in the future and be affected by terms like this. He did not want them to be alone in the crowd. As if the terms of this one offer somehow set a precedent for all future negotiations in the world of conservative media companies. Stephen thinks the way Daily Wire is trying to do business 
is not good for the conservative cause. Stephen revealed that he recorded a phone call with Jeremy. It does not appear as though Jeremy knew the call was recorded. Not long after this, Ben Shapiro joined the discussion as well, through both a video and a series of tweets. Ben provided a timeline of the negotiations between the Daily Wire and Stephen Crowder. According to Ben, here's what happened. On October 5, 2022, agents for Stephen requested an offer from the Daily Wire, which the Daily Wire sent the same day. On November 2, Stephen said he wanted $30 million a year instead of $12.5 million. Twelve days later, the Daily Wire refused Stephen's request. On December 12, Stephen registered a domain name, StopBigCon.com. On January 9, 2023, Stephen secretly recorded Jeremy during a phone call. At the time making this video, this is where the controversy stands. Stephen is acting as though he's trying to defend the conservative movement, and the Daily Wire is pointing out how they are bound by the laws of mathematics. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. What are my thoughts about Stephen Crowder's debating skills? The approach that many people take towards Stephen Crowder is based on their political beliefs. Generally speaking, conservatives tend to appreciate Stephen more than liberals will. This is simply the nature of politics. But there is an appreciation a person can have of any political commentator, which is separate of that particular commentator's ideology. It's like if someone's a fan of a particular football team, they can still acknowledge a talented quarterback on the opposing team. I watched a number of Stevens' videos, including his debates with people who maintain liberal beliefs. I noticed that a pattern emerges. Stephen appears to be intelligent, and he is well-prepared, but with a limited number of talking points. He typically confronts liberals who are not very well-informed about the topic they are discussing. For example, Stephen tends to target college students, a group that is still forming their beliefs and doesn't have the experience to be an expert in political commentary. The topic Stephen selects is almost always one that is highly contentious, not something boring like the funding of various social projects. He's picking topics that make people angry. He also tends to select topics that would be viewed as weaknesses in the liberal argument, like the beliefs maintained by people on the extreme left as opposed to moderate liberals. Stephen's list of liberal positions is similar to those criticized by the liberal political commentator Bill Maher. This gives Stephen a little bit of a wider audience, because even some liberals will look at his criticisms and say, well, he has a point on that one issue. Despite his intelligence and preparedness, Stephen's debating skills are fairly limited. There isn't much depth to his argument. It's really more about sound bites. I think he makes some good points, but his understanding of conservative ideology is not profound. He's a little bit too concrete. In a sense, he is the opposite of somebody like Jordan Peterson, who is often too abstract. The advantage that Jordan has, however, is that he's able to have a much deeper and more refined conversation during a debate. Item number two, what do I think about Steven Crowder's videos where he states his position? So these are not the ones where he is debating. Here again, I think Stephen demonstrates a lot of concrete thinking. He tends to be repetitive, essentially saying the same thing over and over, but wording it a little differently. It's almost like he's trying to make a 15-minute video with two minutes worth of ideas. Stephen often tries to present his position from an emotional point of view. He's not always arguing logically. Rather, he is upset about the state of the country. He thinks everyone else should be upset as well. Stephen promotes himself as a hero who is trying to save the world from the spread of liberal ideology. He's fighting for the soul of the country. It's a lot of doom and gloom mixed with a sense of urgency. I think in this way, Stephen is just like many political commentators, especially ones who are a bit immature. He lacks sophistication, so he tries to make up for this by promoting the idea that people with a different political ideology are somehow out to destroy humanity. There is no room for disagreement because it's a fight for survival. There's always a hint of a wider conspiracy. By attacking the most extreme liberal positions, Stephen is trying to paint every liberal with the same brush. I think his program name, Louder with Crowder, is quite fitting, although noisier with Crowder 
would be more accurate. Item number three, where do I see Steven Crowder fitting into the larger picture as far as political commentary? I think that Steven is highly attractive to a younger male audience who may value the entertainment piece as much, if not more, than the political arguments. Comparing Steven to Ben Shapiro, I think that Steven wins in the comedy competition, but loses as far as depth of arguments. In addition, I think that Ben does a better job of using logic in his defense of conservative values. Looking at somebody like Tucker Carlson, I think that Stephen is less focused on the liberal elite argument, which is a favorite of Tucker. To Stephen, all liberals are problematic, not just those who are well-educated and wealthy. As I mentioned, Stephen is quite different than Jordan Peterson. Stephen is concrete and linear, whereas Jordan is abstract and philosophical. I think Jordan is much more attractive to people who want to hear the reasoning behind any particular political position. Overall, I think that Steven Crowder occupies a position in the political commentator arena that is geared toward a more dramatic soundbite type of argument as opposed to one that's profound or advances the conversation. I think of his position as talented, but not necessary. All political commentary can be divided into two purposes, persuasion and reinforcement. Persuasion is convincing people who are evaluating a political belief to adopt it. And reinforcement is telling people why the political belief they already adopted is correct. Stephen is definitely in the reinforcement camp. Item number four, what do I think happened in the incident between Stephen Crowder and the Daily Wire? As I mentioned, Stephen's position is that he's trying to protect future political commentators and the Daily Wire's position is that math is good. I don't buy Stephen's argument even for a second. He's 35 years old. He's not looking to pass the torch. Given that Stephen asked for $30 million a year, at least according to the Daily Wire, and recorded a phone call, I think it stands to reason that Stephen was upset because he wanted more money. He believed he was over two times as valuable as the Daily Wire thought he was. He keeps saying that it's not about the money, but it is absolutely about the money. Furthermore, the fact that he recorded a phone call is really going to affect how people do business with Stephen. It's impossible to trust him at this point. I don't think he understands how devious that behavior appears. It's like he's disconnected and does not have empathy. Perhaps he fell in with the wrong crowd. Item number five, one area that this incident highlighted, which surprised many people, is how much money can be made by being a political commentator. There is nothing that Steven Crowder does that should be worth $34,000 a day, yet market forces dictate that his value might be even higher. Here's what I think happens in these situations. When people get involved in promoting a political ideology, they quickly learn that moving to an extreme and attacking the opposite extreme are better ways of making money than having a nuanced view of politics. In addition, they have to make political debates existential in nature, like they are fighting for the future of humanity. Everything must be at stake. These strategies tend to involve an audience emotionally, whereas a completely logical approach does not. Commentators are also rewarded for simplifying issues and never conceding even one point to the opposite ideology. I think that Stephen made an error by going to war with the Daily Wire. He made himself look greedy and gained nothing in the process. I would say Stephen's level of thinking in this scenario was like a fourth grader, but it's clear that a fourth grader would have navigated this situation more diplomatically. Now moving to my final thoughts. There will always be a wide range of political commentators with varying levels of skill. This is not good or bad, but I think the success of commentators like Stephen raises a compelling question. Why do people want their political beliefs to be reinforced all the time? Stephen is not about teaching, he is about validation. Each political ideology claims that they are based on science, yet neither appreciates one important scientific concept. It's absolutely okay and actually necessary to believe certain things. A person cannot be up in the air forever. But in the world of science, when a person comes to believe something, they then work to disprove that belief. They are always willing to evaluate evidence that may be against their conclusions and willing to change their mind. Steven Crowder encourages people to dig in on one side. One can make a better argument that he should be encouraging people to use their ability to reason, 
to contemplate compromise, and to appreciate the perspectives of other people. Perhaps being a face in the crowd would only be worth about $12.5 million a year, instead of $30 million for playing to the crowd. Those are my thoughts on the controversy between Steven Crowder and the Daily Wire. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.